we're developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. It's no longer a theory. German philosopher Johann von Goethe once said, There are none more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe that they are free. But few who hear the words ever realize that they are the ones to whom Goethe was referring. For the reality is that every person in the civilized world is enslaved from childhood. They are enslaved in a prison without walls or bars, and so few ever realize it, but all are enslaved nonetheless. And what the people of the world are enslaved to is a system of perpetual self-generating debt that is created for them wholly by design by private international banking interests. And the people are taught from an early age to just accept this debt because this is just the way things are. But the reality is that this is not just the way things are, but more the way things have been designed. And all one has to do is to glance around them at the state of the world today to realize that though this is the way things currently are, it is most definitely not the way things should be. The most powerful and useful tool a person can ever gain in their life is knowledge. For with knowledge comes wisdom and a deeper understanding. And real truth can be exhilarating because real truth will set you free. Now whether you believe in the Illuminati or not, whether you take the time to listen to so-called conspiracy theories or not, there are some things that should be clearly understood by all. These are not conspiracy theories by any stretch of the imagination. They are well documented, quite traceable and very provable facts. And these facts are as follows. There is one ruling bloodline that exists on this earth. This ruling bloodline is very old. It is the same bloodline that has always ruled the earth ever since the days of ancient Egypt. And it is very pervasive. For example, Many people think that anyone can get to be President of the United States, but the reality is that all US Presidents have been Freemasons, and a large number of them are in fact related, and their lineage can be traced back to European monarchy, and in particular to the line of William of Orange. This elite bloodline can actually be traced back a good deal further than William of Orange, and even back as far as the royalty of ancient Egypt. And it's this very same bloodline that has ruled the earth ever since, and to which the British monarchy and the current US president can both ultimately be traced. Many people may be surprised to learn that US President George W. Bush is in fact the 13th cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, the current British monarch. Reverence for the royal bloodline and worship of Amun Ra is still carried out in the world today, though it is veiled and secretive, but the symbolism remains true, as always, hidden in plain view. Adherence to such traditions is why each of the three city-states of London, Vatican and the District of Columbia all have their own obelisks. The London obelisk is also accompanied by two sphinx wrought in the image of Cutmosis, indicating that it is in London that the royal bloodline actually resides. The fact that out of all the pharaohs to choose from, the London Sphinx depicts Tutmosis is actually very telling indeed for a number of reasons, but that is another tale. The British monarchy is steeped in ancient traditions and symbolism, and they do not attempt to hide these connections. They just don't mention them or answer questions about them, but the signs and symbols are right there for discerning eyes to clearly see, again, as always, hidden in plain view. 
Just a look at the royal coat of arms, the royal regalia and the coronation throne clearly demonstrates these connections. And the evidence linking these rulers to the one bloodline does exist. All the information to verify these claims lies within the public domain. It is up to each of you to connect the dots yourself. More importantly, however, is the fact that over the last 200 odd years there has developed behind this ruling bloodline another elite class, somewhat similar to a priesthood that remains hidden in the shadows. This shadowy priesthood is the money changers, the international banking elite, consisting of 13 very influential families, and it is this shadowy elite who ultimately controls things from behind the scenes. This control is achieved through covert manipulation of the global money systems and maintained through an intricate web of interconnected secret societies through which control over the flow of all money, all resources, all food and more importantly all information through manipulation of the world's educational institutions and corporate media is also achieved. Many of these smaller secret societies are completely oblivious to the existence of the others, but all lead back to a round table of just six, and ultimately to one at the very top that is populated by virtually a handful of individuals. It is this handful of very powerful men that controls all the other societies, and through them the heartbeat of the entire world. The society that sits at the very top was founded on Knights Templar traditions in Bavaria in 1776 by a man called Adam Weishaupt, and this is the Order of the Illuminati. The man who commissioned Weishaupt for the task was Mayor Amschel Rothschild, and it was done in order to carry out a plan conceived by Rothschild and the heads of 12 other families at a secret meeting that took place in 1773. These families included the Warbirds, the Schiffs and the Oppenheimers. The Illuminati has since become the most powerful society in the world, and in the last 230 years it has been instrumental in helping the Rothschild family accumulate over one half of the world's total wealth, at the cost of quite literally millions of innocent lives. The hoarded wealth of this one family alone could comfortably feed, clothe and house every man, every woman and every child on earth and this is just one of the 13 Illuminati families. The goal of the Illuminati has always been a simple one, and that is to achieve, by whatever means possible, total ownership and control over no less than every resource, every government, every rock, every drop of water, every blade of grass, and every living creature, both human and non-human, in the entire world. And since its inception, for over 230 years, the Order of the Illuminati has been tirelessly, relentlessly, and unfalteringly steering its members towards the achievement of that one ultimate goal. Through secrecy, they have so far been extremely successful in their endeavours. In fact, so much so that we are right now living in the time when they intend to see this long-spanned work come to fruition. The situation we are witnessing in the world right now is in fact the final endgame of the Illuminati. This is their big grab for ultimate power and mass depopulation. Some people claim that the Illuminati is a myth, and what is really to blame are organisations such as Zionism, but I assure you that this is not the case. It goes far deeper than Zionism, and such people have simply limited the scope of their vision. They have locked onto an answer that supports their beliefs and have refused to delve any deeper. They are not seeing the bigger picture. Greek philosopher Socrates once said that true wisdom is knowing how little we actually know, and he was absolutely correct, and this is why it is important to keep an open mind and allow your beliefs to be flexible enough to change as new knowledge is acquired. And it is important to listen to all the information, and not to just that which reinforces your beliefs, because this conspiracy goes very deep, and Zionism and the Jewish influence over the money system is merely one layer of it. It goes still deeper even than the Illuminati. Those who we know as the Illuminati are merely the shadowy controllers. The plan that is unfolding in the world today is indeed an old one, and it is a plan that is very complex, but not so with the system of control that is in place to blind the people to its existence. This system of control just appears to be complex, but in reality, it isn't. In reality, it's very simple, and it's very fragile. However, it is its apparent complexity that has kept it so well veiled, and it has also been kept very well hidden by constructing a conspiracy culture to breed around it, and by then promoting an air of endless ridicule towards such concepts. Indeed, the creation and proliferation of such a culture and promotion of constant ridicule towards it has been one of the Illuminati's most valuable assets in obscuring the reality of the society's existence. 
The entire Illuminati system is today operated by the Crown. And what is the Crown exactly? Well, contrary to popular belief, the Crown does not refer to the royal family or to the British monarchy, but to the inner city of London, which in actual fact is a privately owned corporation that functions as a completely separate sovereign state outside the jurisdiction of England, the same as its two sister city-states of Vatican and Washington's District of Columbia, all of which combine to form the empire of the three cities. Most people are completely unaware that when they swear allegiance to the Crown, they are actually swearing allegiance to this private corporate empire owned by the 13 Illuminati families. These are the very same private individuals who also indirectly own and operate the World Bank. And what does the World Bank do exactly? Well, apart from other things like control global oil prices, it lends money to whole countries by supplying each country's Federal Reserve Bank, and then it collects interest on these loans, which is paid by taxing the labour of the peoples of each country. Now let me just run that by you again so you clearly understand how this works. If you live in a country that has a Federal Reserve Bank, then the World Bank, a privately run company that is able to legally create money from thin air, is who supplies your country with money at interest and you as the individual is required to pay a tax on your labor to pay off the interest on the government's loan from this private bank many people are duped into believing that their taxes pay for infrastructure and without taxes there would be no roads and no schools and the country would fall apart but this is completely untrue the government has the legal right to coin its own money and control its value but it does not it borrows money from a private bank and uses this bank loan to pay for infrastructure and then you are taxed in order to pay off the interest on the loan interest which from a business perspective is pure profit for the international banksters However you choose to look at things, one thing must be clearly understood, and that is that each person in the Western world who has a job is forced every year to give away approximately three months worth of wages in taxes, and that tax money goes directly into the pockets of the private individuals who own and run the World Bank. It's one big privately run scam. And if you ever allow yourself to be microchip and cash money is abolished altogether, which is their plan, then all bills and all taxes will automatically be removed from your account when they are due, whether you actually owe the money or not. And if you complain about the system, well then they can simply turn off your chip. Since all commerce will centre around the chip, you will not be able to buy food or pay rent or do anything at all. And there will be absolutely nothing whatsoever that you can do about it. And that is their goal, to limit the size of the population on Earth and to microchip those that are left. And then it's game, set and match, and total control of the world and everyone in it will be in the hands of an international cartel of criminal banksters. This whole scam is being planned and carried out very methodically. It is these people and their minions and puppets who attend such gatherings as Bilderberg meetings and the Bohemian Grove Summer Festival, and who still adhere closely to the schools of ancient mystery, which many, such as the late Bill Cooper, have referred to as the ancient mystery religion. However, it is more a mechanism of control designed to reach an ultimate goal than a religion. Though steeped in ritual and what many would term black magic, it is simply a system the Illuminati system. And though its workings seem complex to the layman, in reality it's quite simple. And it's also very easy to see once one has acquired the correct manner of looking at things. And there is definite purpose and reason in the ritualistic nature of this system, in its use of numerology, symbolism and ritual. And all that is needed to realize this is a deeper understanding of the true nature of the universe and how we are all connected to it. However, this film directs its focus on the system itself and a key to the system functioning, which is through covert control of the money supply by very few people. It is crucial that people become aware of this issue because the methods by which society could free itself from this system of control are also very simple. Once a person has gained an understanding of the true realities of this world we live in, and this is not as difficult a task as you may at first think, because due to its complexities, the illusion the elite have created that most perceive as reality is a very fragile one. It is fragile because it is not reality. The reality is that the world does not have to be this way at all. It does not have to be heading in the direction that it is heading. People do not have to live in a never-ending sea of self-generating debt. Wars do not have to be fought and children do not have to starve. And don't think people starve because the world is overpopulated. Don't believe what the television tells you. The world isn't overpopulated at all. In fact, let's look at it realistically with a simple comparison of population versus land mass. And we can do a rough estimate and formulate a quick hypothetical to demonstrate this very easily.